In this clip, we're going to take a look at working with colliders. So our particles are moving. We already took a look at how the nucleus functions and the basic properties of the end particle. And we do have them colliding with the floor here, but what if we want them to collide with, let's say, a piece of geometry? So let's go ahead and create a sphere. Go ahead and make a sphere right here. And let's say we place it right about here. So by default, these particles are not going to interact with the geometry. We actually have to specify our geometry as a collider. Now to do that, strangely enough, you might find we don't go to our end particles tab. You're not going to find really anything here about colliders. Instead, it's actually the end cloth tab we're going to go to. You can see the very first option is to create a passive collider. Now, why is this under the end cloth, not under the end particles? That's because the end particles, cloth, and end hair systems all work together. They share the same nucleus, they share the same colliders. Why is it though under end cloth and not under end particles? I really don't have a better explanation other than and cloth was the first system that was introduced as part of the nucleus dynamics, and perhaps they just chose to leave it there. However, we do have to go over to this end cloth menu to get it. So just select your geometry, click Create Passive Collider, and that's really all you need to do. If I go ahead and hit Play now, you'll see that my particles do in fact now collide with this sphere, and you can see they kind of slip over the top of it there and spill out. So let's take a look at some of the options on this collider. Now to do that we can do one of two things. I could select my sphere and go to the attribute editor and you'll notice that it ha does have these uh, new tabs including the end rigid tab. We could also to make it a little simpler just select this end rigid node that's been created and that'll give us the same options over here. So I'll go ahead and do that just to keep things a little bit simpler. So just as with everything else we've seen um, in our uh, end particles so far, we do have an enable or disable, turning that off. You know, it's as if the collider isn't there. You can see it'll fall right through it. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. Now, you can see I can also turn off collisions. And you might wonder, well, why do we have two of the exact same setting there? What's the difference, whether I shut off collisions or disable the whole thing? Well, colliders are actually capable of more than just creating collisions. They can actually create force fields and wind fields, things we'll take a look at a little bit later. So turning off collisions only shuts off the collisions. If we were using those other options, we could, of course, keep those on while the collisions are off. Okay. So the first thing we want to take a look at when working with these colliders is going to be the actual visible collision geometry because what you're looking at here this geometry is not actually what the particles are colliding with in fact if i go ahead and hit play here and we'll go ahead and stop it right about there you'll notice that these particles actually whoops are not sitting on the surface they're actually a little above that surface and the reason for that is the actual collision surface is raised a bit from the geometry we can visualize it by going here to solve or display and turning on collision thickness. Now, if you don't see it appear in here, you can try tapping rewind and you can see that'll cause it to pop up. And you can see now our surface is just a little bit larger than it was before. If I go to wireframe, you can actually see that change in distance. This blue line here is the geometry. The green line is my new kind of uh, uh, collision, collision surface or collision geometry, whatever you want to call it. Now you'll notice it doesn't completely sit against the surface and that's because these particles that we looked at in the last clip also have collisions on them too. I can open up their collisions here, turn on their collision thickness. You can see they're actually fairly large and you can see now these two surfaces actually sit against one another. So I can actually take these down in size. I'll take my collide width scale here and shrink that so these particles will have much smaller collision spheres turn that off and then I can go back to this guy here and do the same thing and I'll do this in wireframe mode so it's a little easier to see so I'll go ahead and bring that thickness oops down if again if you don't see it update you can tap rewind and that should cause it to update there we go tap rewind again you can see it's very close to the surface now and now I could shut off that collision thickness Again, tap rewind to update and you can see now the particles will look like they actually sit 
on that surface. Now, you'll also see collision flag up here at the top. This is how the collisions are being calculated. Face is typically what's used for most collisions because it's just taking the geometry and basically offsetting those faces up a bit to create our collision surface. However, I'll go ahead and turn this on here, we can switch this to vertex mode. And you can see now there's these tiny little vertex dots that represent collisions. Obviously things are going to pass right through this. You'd have to make these dots fairly large. We can also do edge mode. You can see where each edge is going to cause collisions. But of course, again, all these particles will fall through, which is typically why we use the face mode here, because that kind of covers the whole thing for us. Okay, so then down here we have some of the options we've already looked at. You know, we have bounce, friction, and stickiness. Obviously, if I go ahead and up my bounce over here, this object is going to cause some of these particles to bounce off it a little bit more. You can see that there. However, we can also up the friction, and that's going to cause the particles not to want to slip off the surface as easily. So even though they're bouncing, you can see they're kind of sticking to it a tiny bit. But ultimately, a lot of them do slip off. Now, stickiness is a little bit different. If I up my stickiness, especially if I take it pretty high, it's not like friction where, you know, if they kind of slide down far enough, they'll still fall. You can see it actually works a lot like glue. Anywhere where it touches, the particles typically stick. So you can imagine there's all kinds of fun things that we can do with that. So we'll go ahead and turn that back down over here. So I'll turn on a little bit of friction and a little bit of bounce here. So there is another option here we kind of skipped by, which is the collide strength. So right now, um, it's basically seeing this collider as having 100% functionality. Uh, you know, it's, it's basically every time a particle collides with it, it's going to exhibit 100% of its force onto that object or onto that particle. So we can cut that strength, let's say, down by 75% to 0.25. So now the particles won't be affected by it nearly as much. So you won't really see too much of a difference here. This is going to have more of an effect if this object is moving in, for example, hits the particles. But you could see the particles didn't bounce nearly as much. They kind of yeah, they hit into it, but they're not influenced at it nearly as much as they were before. So we'll go ahead and put that back up. The collision layers we'll discuss a little bit later. So um, those are some of the basic options on our colliders. So there are other things here as well. There are force fields and wind fields, and we're going to be covering those in a future clip, and we're going to look at them not just for our... Um, uh, sphere over here, but we'll also look at them for the particles. So that's all for this clip, and I'll see you in the next one.